Our business model is very simple. Uh, the cord blood or cord tissue stem cells collected at birth has to be done at birth because after that it goes haywire, right? So uh, collected at birth um, belongs to the child. It's not the parents. But as you all know, right, Anglo-Saxon laws basically impose the fact that the child, uh, staff, child cannot contract with the company. He's a minor. In fact, it's only one day old or something like that. So as a result of that, the, the parents contract on behalf of the child. Now, as a company that wants to provide a service for the long term, we have a contract essentially to lock parents in for a long term. And what is that contract? It's a 21-year, in the case in Singapore, non-cancellable contract. Right, so the parents basically you know, um, signs a contract on behalf of the child for 21 years. We have different modes of payment so that you know, all works of life can at least you know, store their child's precious resource from an annual plan all the way to a one-time uh, payment plan. And the plans here are essentially offsetable using a um, child development account as well. So what this basically says is that it's a growing uh, cash flow business at the end of the day. Now, proportion-wise, we have about quite close to 48,000 babies already stopped between Hong Kong and Singapore, right? 50% of my parents essentially elect to store on an annual basis, 50% uh, or 25% on a 10-year basis, meaning on the 11th year, they will continue paying the storage fees, and 25% uh, essentially pays everything up front. Now, even from that, you can see that the demographic of uh, parents, like those guys who can essentially afford to pay up front are the ones who are a bit more senior in their years, right? Um, maybe it's the third kid and calling it a final shot, right? So um, third kid and then, okay, let's pay everything and be done with it. Then for those folks that essentially chose to do uh, on an annual basis, they're probably younger, right? Um, because they've got baby prams to buy, you know, uh, the wife wants to uh, have the best guy need to deliver the baby, uh, she wants this, she wants that, and therefore, at the end of the day, no more money, right? So we provide them with an installment payment plan for them to pay. But maybe five years later on, if they want to pay everything all at one go, we also have that service available. We have that option available for um, the patients themselves. Now, um, this is a bit of a history. Um, and in essence, uh, when we were a young startup company in Singapore back in 01, we are like no other young companies. Uh, we went through venture capital fundraising. Uh, and at the end of uh, 2003, um, there was this instrument called RCPS, Redeemable Convertible Preference Shares imposed by the VCs on us. So we had to find a liquidity event, in other words, IPO. So we li uh, listed ourselves on the Australian Stock Exchange at that point in time, back in 2004. And then in 2010, we brought the company back to Singapore through a demerger process. Okay, for a technical view as to what this demerger process is a very difficult demerger process. But you know what? It became a case study in Australia today. It is a case study... Uh, that a lot, uh, many of our lawyer friends in Australia use as a way to unlock value for shareholders from a capital gains tax regime country like Australia. We didn't have to pay any capital gains tax for a listing in Singapore. Now, in terms of um, market leadership, it's important to note that um, on the 28th of June, we make an SGX announcement that we have acquired back uh, the companies that's residing in India, Philippines and Indonesia. And this essentially is the market share we've got today as a whole group. In Singapore, we are number one. Uh, we hold, uh, in accordance to a DFSTAS report, um, this is Deloitte and Tuch uh, report. They say that we have a market share of 62%. Um, and Hong Kong, we are number two. Uh, mainland China, we invested through a uh, mainland Chinese company called China Cold Blood Corporation. Right? They are the largest cold blood bank in the whole of China. Uh, China today has got 10 in principle approval license to operate a, a cord blood bank, but only seven of them are in operation. And China Cord Blood Corporation essentially owns four of the seven cord blood banks in China. Right, um, um, as far as cord blood uh, industry in China is concerned, you cannot just walk in and say, I want to start a cord blood bank. Because you've got to understand this, that 35 years ago, in the dark ages of Xinjiang, uh, they had this blood fiasco, whereby blood transfusion end up from somebody, and then there was essentially a HIV outbreak in China. So the blood business, as far as China is concerned, is deemed as a restrictive asset or restrictive in the industry. Only notable players that are allowed to operate in the public banking space can operate in that space. The second thing unique about China is that it is monopolistic by nature, autonomous. If a court blood is to be given a license in the province 
of Guangdong province. It can only operate in Guangdong. No other players can come in and operate it because they are, they are operating a hybrid and private model. Hybrid means I collect um, cord blood from the public and then store it. And then if, let's say, someone requires a transplant and if there's a HLA type, you could essentially use it and sell it to the person, um, to the hospital, for a small fee, cost recovery basis, just like how Singapore Cord Blood Bank is uh, functioning, right, um, on the cost recovery basis for a transplant to happen. And the private is essentially is what rights on it, right, for uh, annual storage and things like that. So China Cold Blood Corporation basically operates in Guangzhou, um, Beijing, Zhejiang, and they own 24% of Shandong. In India, we started in 2009. We are the newcomer, right? All the other Cold Blood Banks have been in India for a long time. There are 20 guys or 20 companies in India today. We are number three. Not bad, right? Philippines and Indonesia, we are the number one player today. Now, uh, we have got many track record, um, and, and I won't uh, bore you guys with all this. 